My name is uh, Fred Sagwe. I'm the Net Squared Assistant Organizer and also uh, a Frontier. So we wish to welcome you today for the an non-profit uh, tech interview from our able Shannon Michela. She will introduce herself and let us know uh, from there. I can just get over the question. But the first and foremost, let her maybe give a brief intro about herself. You're welcome, Shannon. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Fred. Um, I hope I'm clear. So as all of you have heard, my name is Shannon Mujera. I am an alumni from Strathmore. I uh, just recently cleared from my undergraduate. I did uh, computer science and informatics, informatics and computer science. Yeah, and um, prior to that, I was also the chair of our IT Students Association. That's back in school. And then in addition, I'm also part of the co-founding team with Fred for the Robotic Society of Kenya. I've done uh, a lot of, um, I've been involved with a lot of activities in tech. Um, I've partnered with several um, companies such as Microsoft. We've been doing some various types of competitions. We've even won some few achievement awards. I'm really passionate about tech and especially now in nonprofit. I just recently also got, um, I'm also a tutor at Kaplora International School. I'm teaching students how to code. Uh, basically from grade six all the way to high school. Yeah, this is it's what I enjoy doing and just uh, teaching them how to basically uh, learn and develop coding skills and how to use tech to solve society problems. Yeah, so back to you, Fred. Ah, fantastic, awesome. That's, uh, that's so good. I also forgot to say maybe we do work for, together with you in the robotics side of Kenya, and that's so fantastic. So that much I do, uh, maybe you could just go ahead straight to the questions. And uh, for today's, mm -hmm. and uh, as usual, we should start with the bio and uh, the, do some few biograph questions. So to be not in any order, but we hope that uh, to be fine for us. So maybe we could start uh, for the first question. Who are you and what do you do? I think that one you've answered already. I don't know if you should go on that. So maybe let's go on just the second one. Uh, what's your original story and how did you become a nonprofit techie? I can repeat again. What's your original story? I think everybody has a story. And how did you become a nonprofit? Yeah, take it. Okay, so I, I think now from the beginning, uh, my story begins way back in high school. Because in high school, I remember there was um, the time we, we had career fairs and guys, different people from different uh, industries would come and just share their stories. Or, and, and, you know, they, they give you an idea of how it is maybe to be an engineer, a doctor, and so on and so forth. Uh, but for me, I think what stood out for me is when uh, there's this lady, I, I cannot remember, recall very well, but she was a computer scientist herself and she shared her story of how she uses technology to solve world problems. And she was speaking about a particular project, helping farmers um, like uh, better their, um, their produce and just monitor you know, things like soil and moisture and just know how much of the uh, like manure to put and stuff like that and then the kind of yields they got and you know like that that's something that transformed their lives from getting um, maybe few returns to getting more and more profit so I think her story really stuck with me all throughout high school and I say like oh, this is something that I'd really like to do I'd really like to impact lives and just you know see a difference in someone's life and so i i started now from then on i, I gained the interest of just knowing and learning more about tech how we can how it can be used to solve world problems because that's the uh, what you kept on um reiterating that tech is the only like it's the tool to solve different types of problems and it can be used in different uh, industries like you're not limited to only uh, being an engineer you can uh, it has different applications in the various fields. Yeah, so I think now from then that that's how uh, it began. Then uh, so fast forward after high school, I came now to campus. I, uh, I chose to do now the computer science and informatics because I was really uh, into, into tech and math and stuff. And uh, then after that, I remember I volunteered uh, at the community outreach program, which is like the community service wing of the university where we used to go every week to the less advantaged, maybe children's homes, um, prisons as well, 
just talk to the inmates and see uh, like how they're doing, how the kind of activities they're involved in and how we can offer a helping hand. So I, I think through my various interactions with them, like I could see the kind of um, challenges they are facing. And I just got to put myself in their shoes and tell like, just understand the kind of challenges they're facing. And I could see like how I asked myself, how can I be able to, you know, lend a helping hand? How can I make the difference in their lives? Like, because they are part of our community. So uh, I think now then with a couple of friends, we started now uh, thinking in terms of how with the knowledge and skills you are gaining in class from web development, uh, database uh, design and stuff like that. So how can we be able to um, improve the lives of those around our communities? So I think from then, we, me and a group of my friends, we started uh, like doing community projects, let's say. And we'd uh, just, just go lie us and talk to the people from the community. If it's maybe a prison, what, what would they need? And for, for the prison, um, who the, we had gone to Naivasha prison and community prison, which is like one of the largest in Kenya. And one major challenge they face is because uh, the inmates themselves, they are um, very, um, they have, because most of them actually, they are, they are into, I mean, they they have been locked because maybe um, they fell out into crime because of lack of education. They had, uh, like, they didn't have any choice. So, like, they they have they had lost hope. So even prison gives them hope because they have a chance and opportunity to study, and they had gotten various partners on uh, who can be able to assist them to, you know, to just get back on track to learn and develop their skills. So mostly uh, in in prison, what uh, they normally learn is the basic. Um, uh, 844 system, you know, just uh, math, English, the STEM sciences and uh, languages. So they, they, and then they usually have art craft, uh, like things like furniture doing, doing um, tailoring. So it's not much into technical skills per se. So that is one thing that we identified uh, yeah, as, as a major challenge there. And so we were thinking of how we can be able and, and they also they kind of computers they have that they're really few and they're not as resourceful so the major challenge was now in getting the number of computers and so like installing the kind of software when they're still in prison they can still uh, they can be able to do something different and find uh provide for their families and just be transformed people yeah so i think with that we had done a drive um we did a, a drive uh, just trying to get uh a few machines that we can be able to install um yeah in the in the prisons and then we we got like a few like 10 so and then I'm, I'm glad to have been part of the team and we also like just tried to get some softwares for the inmates to learn yeah so that, that was back in uh, 20 uh 2018 if i'm not wrong yeah just uh, like two three three years back yeah, so I think now from then, like uh, once I saw my one project that kind of really assist, change lives of people, you know, those ones who really lost hope. And now after that, they really have hope even after be after prison, after their sentence is over, even within the prison, they can find something to do and develop their skills like that really. Um, it gave me a heart for the community and just to do things uh, that can be able to benefit my community and change and impact lives. Yeah, so then uh, I think just um, throughout um, my campus experience, I've been involved in different projects, um, even just sharing the IT Students Association body, trying to get more partners such as Microsoft Oracle to come in and train more of our students and uh, so they can have that natural feel for just giving back to the community. They use this, they develop their skills. And now the kind of solutions that they develop is to um, yeah to to just ensure that the community lives uh, the community becomes better and you know has the, the impact aspect of it not just for the sake of profit but also for the sake of impact as well yeah so then I think after that um, I've, I've been attending various events conferences meeting different people even with you Fred I liked you um, I, I think even for the robotic society of Kenya we came together we founded it because we saw this a niche because the technical um the the Tech is the way to go. This is how 
the world will be in the next few years, definitely. And uh, the young generation really needs to um, to be skilled in this. And it's a really good niche of trying to um, to equip our young learners with these skills, even so, such that by the time they're even old enough, they can be able to uh, to be uh, like experts already and develop even more complex and more efficient solutions that can be able to yeah impact their communities differently yeah so even 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 with my current teaching at the international school so that's basically what we are focusing on training young learners so that they can develop skills to come up with their own solutions uh, to yeah uh, come up with their own solutions that can be able to impact the community positively yeah so i think that's my story in brief Wow, fantastic, Shannon. And I especially I have loved the work you do in prisons. I know uh, they were one of the marginalized uh, people in the communities, and people tend not tend to go and work in prison. So I'm happy about the technology of frontiering, to empowering also education in school. And the nice story to follow, actually. Uh, even there's some other things I wanted, maybe how you develop your skills. You have even talked about everything, and have shown the correlation between uh, how and profits working. So maybe we'll just add straight to software and hardware. And maybe the first question could be, what software do you use every day? What software do you use every day? I've heard you talking about Microsoft and other stuff, but maybe do you maybe let us know, elaborate a bit on what kind of software you use every day. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, I'd say I use, um, let's say like, uh, <laughs> uh, a variety, because it depends really on what I'm, I want to achieve. Yeah, because I, I do, I, I personally do a lot of uh, this design as well, because um, I'm also a curriculum uh, content developer. So for my coding class, for the young kids, I need to to design something that is more visual and appealing to the learners because they are young and they like things that are having a, a lot of pictures. So like most of the time I'd be using uh, some design, design softwares, let's say this are now maybe not, not as technical, something like, um, like Canva or uh, post on my wall just to for the images. And uh, even um, I also use um, Inkscape as well. Yeah, I'm also good with the basic design, just how to make images, uh, animations, stuff like that to make more content, the content more um, appealing and more attractive to the young learners. And then so uh, apart from design softwares, I also use, because I also work with different people we use, uh, let's say, Microsoft Teams for our communications, uh, sharing documents, and we have like a central drive that we can be able to update. Then I think now for the more complex projects that I have done, uh, not necessarily geared to uh, towards maybe um, the, the 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 learning aspect of it is like, uh, okay, we use GitHub of course just to to store our code and to update. And we can be able to collaborate with different people depending on the kind of project that we are doing. So we use uh, definitely. I'd recommend GitHub. It's easy to use, and once you get, you learn it, and you have the gist of it, you can be able to collaborate with various people, share your code, and review it as well. Yeah. So I think apart from uh, uh, GitHub and okay, so because I, I mostly program with uh, with Python. I'm more proficient in Python, so I do, I just I use Jupyter notebooks, so sometimes Spider, depending. So I, I find them really easier to use as compared to maybe having a an installed um uh, what what are they called the 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 code the ID is yeah the ID is integrated development environment. So I, I I prefer having something that is quite versatile, like the, the code books, because you can be able to code wherever you are. You don't, don't necessarily have to, because it's online, you can access your code online. You don't have to have it uh, already pre-installed directly in your computer. So I, I, I prefer I prefer the online tools as compared to the offline tools. Uh, reason being, I can be able to access them uh, at any time. I don't necessarily have to have my machine with me. And then also for ease of collab collaboration and just sharing with others so they can be able to review your code and maybe when you're stuck, you can be able to just share and people can, different people can be able to tell you like, this is where you've gone wrong, you just need to update this or change this to that. 
and so on and so forth. Yeah, then apart from um, apart from that, I'd say also for the community, because it's very important as a developer or even as an educational trainer in the side of tech, uh, and especially for nonprofits, you'd definitely want to focus more into community, um, like these community platforms, like uh, this one just used like meetups, for example. And uh, there's also one where, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, lady communities, women communities that are focused on um, teaching young girls how to code and just building uh, young women who have a careers in tech, who are growing in their careers in tech. And I think that's where I've really got, got to grow and just, uh, you know, meet up with different people who are in various areas of tech, both in the profit side of tech and also in non and non-profit as well, because once you see uh, in, com in such community platforms, you can be able, like for women in data science, um, also in the uh, WTM, that's the Women Tech Makers, it's by Google. So like just, just like liasing with them, they usually have, okay, as much as they have these meetup pages as well, there's mo most of the time uh, WhatsApp groups and these events that they usually um, advertise, it's when you can mostly communicate and collaborate with them. And even before COVID, um, we used to have like meetups every every week. So you'd discuss and just uh, um, maybe if you have a project in mind, you'd get to know like what another person is doing. You exchange ideas, you learn from each other, and so on and so forth. So uh, most of the time, you'd either find me using um, these uh, community so uh, platforms just to share maybe what the kind of progress I'm in. Uh, there's also the, uh, there's this one I'm also quite active in. It's called um, the Asian, the mentorship, Asia, the Asian mentorship platform. For that one now, you, it's it's like a mix match where you, you're matched to a mentee because I also mentor other, other people who want to have a career in tech and not only in tech as well, but those who also want to venture into their own things. I can offer advice. Yeah, because I have had some good experience in that. So most of the time, if I'm not uh, actively coding or develop, uh, preparing content, you'd find me um, in those platforms, communication platforms, trying to mentor people, answering questions, and also um, also research. I do some bit of research. In ResearchGate, I try to uh, publish a few articles myself. So uh, I also try to just go through different, what different people are doing, what I can uh, add, what I can change as well. So I, I just like I like to be informed. I like to to know what's happening. So most of the time, I'd be finding in such uh, research sites as well. And uh, also also for developing content and this simple uh, try, trying to because mo most of the time my work involves trying to relay information, and it depends on the kind of audience. So I'd, I'd use different kinds of multimedia from video to uh powerpoint to all that so I, i'm really conversant with such uh multimedia software and the, the ones that depend on relaying information then i think uh, also just for development the, the coding tools the ideas and uh, the community platforms yeah so i think those are the most the softwares that i normally use on a day-to-day -day basis yeah Wow, that's so good. I've had, I've had you talking about GitHub, I've talked about, talk about Python, I've also talked about Meet, the networking, uh, I also talked about IDEs and uh, Canvas for the kids. And then there's that question which comes in, you know, about the cost. So that I would like uh, maybe the second question which is coming, maybe to tell us about uh, what you understand by open source and uh, out of box uh, options. Uh, why have I ever made such kind of uh, choices? Because when we talk about Python, GitHub, uh, and the other stuff, most of them they have been about open source. So maybe you can elaborate a bit uh, on open source and let us know why you chose those tools. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much. So basically for open source technology, it's like um community that contributes to the whole source code of it. It's now you don't have to uh, pay for, for using that particular program or application it's it's community it's free yeah and like maybe the uh, premium ones where you have to pay a certain uh, amount maybe for a license or maybe monthly basis 
subscription model for those kind of applications. So I personally prefer open source, like as you've mentioned, because most of the tools I use are actually open source. Yeah, uh, I prefer open source because uh, the one major reason, of course, it's more uh, versatile, more friendly, because you, you can be able to, it's more flexible in that you can play around with your with the with the code itself with the source code itself and maybe customize it to whatever you want it to do not necessarily because you know for those uh fixed models that you have to pay a subscription or a license for the application you need to let like it's the uh, the developer of the product who has the source code so you really can't customize it to whatever you'd like it to do and then the thing with open source as well you have many, many people are contributing to uh, to the source code and making it better and better. So it's more robust. Yeah, you don't necessarily have, you don't, uh, you're not forced to um, just think in a, in a, in a particular line because different features can be added and you can get it, uh, you can do, it's more efficient, more flexible, more robust. You can, you can just borrow things from the different contributors from the community and make uh, a very, uh, nice application that you want, um, a project that you want to do. And uh, like, like you can get it uh, more easily and more, more, it's more robust. You'll, you'll make a more robust application as compared to if you're using uh, a premiered uh, or a licensed application. So you, the open source would be better. But then also uh, there, there are some applications that are definitely, uh, uh, some applications that are definitely better uh, once you have the license for like for example because they have the kind of features that they have uh, so something like talking about design something like um like uh, let me give an example of now photoshop now the premium version the kind of features that it offers is way really different maybe than uh, what you'd have in a in a free version in a free application or a community application maybe like in cape the the unlike the non-premium versions of the application so they'd give you the features you'd find they are more sophisticated they, they can you can perform more functionalities with them and they are more uh, optimized as compared to having open open source software so for i think now for for any developer out there who's looking okay asking should i do take uh, you know open source or should i uh, choose the other route to get a license and uh, pay, pay a standard premium. It depends on actually whatever you want to do, because the specific the specific applications which uh once you choose like, like if for example mm, a designing software you have one that uh you, you need to pay a premium for one one that is absolutely free. So you you'd weigh in what do you really want to achieve. So you'd have to do like a cost benefit analysis you see what you want to achieve and the pros and cons of having each application software if it's either open source or if, or if it's premier version so if it's something really simple that you want to do it doesn't involve a lot of complexities getting features here and there that uh, you'd need maybe a professional to do you just rather go for the open source which works still well and still very efficient and robust but if it's something very specific and very uh, expert or detail oriented, you'd rather go for uh, a premium or paid version of the application because you there, there you'll be able now to achieve your goal and whatever uh, the objective that you want to meet by uh, you using that particular application or software. Yeah, so I think it depends. It really depends on the kind of um, the purpose and the objective and what you really want to achieve. On your various projects, but open source software works really well. So maybe just in case you re you really want to have some certain kind of features that are not available in the open software, then I'd recommend, or even me, I'd personally go for the uh, you know the licensed versions. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, and now I think you have uh, gave us a approved description of what open source is and the merits and merits and merits of using. You know, people sometimes they get uh, uh, surprised that uh, they're wondering, is it what is the appropriate time for me to use open source or maybe to buy a commercial or subscribe? And that's so good of you. So uh, yeah. on following that one, maybe what's uh, one tool that uh, you think everyone should use uh, every day, like, but doesn't? This is a tool which is in your mind. You think that this is a tool which uh, each and every one of us should be using. 
but doesn't. So maybe that is like more of stepping, you know, to even more of elaboration. But what what one tool do you think uh, should everyone use, but they don't? Welcome. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. So I think uh, one tool that is essential for everyone, whether techie or non-techie, is um, planning tools. Okay, let me let me just uh, narrow down because for me, I'd say I use something like. Um, okay, uh, for, for a general person, I'd say something like. Uh, uh, like uh, let me give because I'm having so many examples. Let me try to narrow to one. Um, Okay, so something like Trello, for uh, for example, which is like um, a teams management tool. So you like your, it, it shows you like a to do list, what you want to do, why, by when it should be achieved. So it's it's more of like planning out your day. So what you want to achieve, or just uh, it, it's maybe for projects basically, but it can apply to basically any place anywhere. Uh, even for an, for an individual who's not really into tech or much as like much into that, but for even for a techie person or a profit or a non-profit organization, having a um, management, a planning management tool is very, very necessary because you know uh, you cannot just do things uh, haphazardly. You really need to plan. You really need to see plan, see what you want to achieve by when, and what are the gauges that uh, like the milestones you want to reach and how you'll be able to gauge how far you've gone, yeah? So it, it's very important for everyone to know how to, to utilize a planning management tool and to know how to be able to follow up because you know what you can't, you cannot evaluate what you cannot be able to like follow up. So you, you need to have different milestones. Let's say you have the objective here because that's how uh, I think most of these um, planning management tools are organized. So you have like a to-do list and who is responsible to do it and by when. And then you'd have like milestones on how uh, maybe let's say activity one, you'd be able to know like th th these are the steps for you to take for you to achieve activity one. So what, once like you have like you, you, you're you able to see your progress once you've maybe checked or checked out the kind of activities you've done, you, you know, you reached out, um, you've been able to take, um, you've been able to do finish up activity one. So now you know you're going to step two, you, 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 got, you write the challenges, um, the merits that, uh, the advantages that you've gotten, the benefits, the challenges and how you can maybe try to face them. So like it's more of a mapping, mapping out of what you want to do, how you want to achieve them, the kind of challenges you're facing and how to uh, actually just, uh, Try, try, try and solve such challenges, like design thinking your work move, move, you know, just, just having that, you know, the, the, the thing also with tech it teaches you how to have um, a structured method of thinking, which really uh, is very essential even in everyday life, not necessarily when you're trying to develop an application or uh, teaching how to code. Yeah, it's just important just to get that structured mind for you to, I mean, structured thinking for you to be able to solve even day-to-day -day problems and uh, be better at organizing and planning and stuff like that. So you'd be able to uh, to focus on your energies on one thing at a particular time and you'd find that you'd finish your things more faster. You'd be more efficient in whatever you do. And like you'll have you'll have actually more time because you're planned and like just being, uh, you know, just going, let, going out on your day and, just letting things fall <laughs> as well. So you really need to work with purpose and with vision. So always keeping track on um, what you want to achieve, how your uh, how your progress is, and finally like evaluating it after you've already gotten, uh, maybe you've completed a particular project. So like that, that's the whole essential of planning uh, to whichever maybe, because different people have different preferences, uh, maybe not, not a particular one, maybe like Trello that you can even just use a normal uh, phone app. Um, I think most of them have task, uh, uh, what are they called, task uh, or to-do to do list, something of the sort. So just, just uh, writing down and uh, because most people use even their phones, you can just use it maybe on your phone, you get a planning app and you can just be able to keep track of whatever you want to do or a vision board. Yeah, or like this is what you want to do by when, what, so you'll and you'll have constant reminders and it will even lead to a better life. You'll be a 
better manager of yourself and different resources and you'll just see yourself growing yeah growing personally both professionally and just in different areas yeah so that's one tool i'd recommend everyone to uh, yeah to look to and have yeah Wow, fantastic. Uh, it's good now that uh, you have given us some, uh, some of the tools, like now the do-do list, which I think most of us are not aware and how we can work on it. Mm, and so, yeah. so good that you, you have a background in computer science and uh, so actually computer science is about problem solving. That's what I usually tell my, <laughs> my students. Uh, that's what I know, basic definition. It's just because we want to solve a problem. And uh, that's yeah. the, the, the reason why I'm saying that uh, problem solving is a advanced surgery skill. Yeah, this entire actually that's what even tell our runners and that we should have a, a, an ability of solving a problem being an organization being a school being in a company even being the government and for the most important thing vip is solving a problem so that's why we are coming to solving problems now the next question would be what do you do when you you can solve a problem a tech problem actually that's a technology problem because i think most people go to google so they want to say uh, if you you have resources to solve that issue but you can't google so what do you think uh, you can't solve? What do you do when you can't solve the tech problem? And, and in your mind, you know, everybody okay. knows if I don't ask a tech, pass, a tech person like you now, or maybe the next option be Googling. And maybe when you do Googling, you have to, maybe you need internet, for example, to be like a challenge in, in the third world country, for example, in Africa. But so you have a problem, which is a technology problem, and you want to solve it. And in your mind, the next thing could be, let me go to Google because that's the power of the, uh, your hands, which can help you. So how could you go that way? Welcome. Okay, okay. Actually, from, from, my, uh, from my experience, I'd say most of the tech uh, challenges maybe when you're developing an application or, uh, or something of the sort, so the, the thing is with, with actually the challenges that you face, most of them, they're actually surprisingly quite simple. Like it's just something you've really missed out. And, uh, you know, and let's say like a bug, for example, when you're coding and maybe it's, you just miss a semicolon at the end, or it's just a syntax error, you've misspelled uh, a simple word and you've just tried the whole day debugging it and you're not seeing anything manly. It can really get very frustrating. You, you try, um, I know, like, this is what we, we are trying in campus. You try posting it in, um, uh, like in, in these websites, community websites, for example, and then you wait for an answer. Or you go try asking your lecturers or someone you, you think it's good, but they are not seeing anything as well. And you know, mo most of the challenges actually that you face, you're the only one who can actually solve them. So, what I recommend for like tech, uh, tech related challenges. It's not something, for, for instance, you know you know what, uh, how you're supposed to run a particular code, for example, and then you, you've done it according to you, you've done it well, and you, you just do not understand why it's not working out. Even just the same case for a project, you know, you followed all the steps, you have all the resources, you've done everything right to the latter, but it's, things are just still not working out. So you really, even if you go to Google, try uh, Googling or, asking someone who has maybe more expertise, which would be now obviously the, the common thing that most people would do. And you know, you'd still find, ah, it's not yet still working out. Because um, I, I know this one, even for a fact, you, you actually, you're the solution to the, you have the solution to the problem you're facing. So what I'd recommend you, just take some time off, because uh, it, it can be really frustrating just to see uh, trade and solve or something that is not uh, being <laughs> solvable per se. So you, you just use unconventional ways of solving it. You take some time off, do something very um, different. For example, if uh, let me use a coding example. Uh, if you're from coding or just doing something a bit technical, seeing it's not working out, you just go do something totally unrelated. Uh, you can go cook, uh, sing, dance, whatever, just something to take your mind away from what you're doing. And you know what this does, you know, it's, it's actually a big mix of uh, psychology and uh, they'd actually tell you like, once you disengage your mind from that particular thing that you're actually doing and it was not trying to solve things, you, you're, you're actually making 
uh, the neurons or something like your neurons are becoming stronger when you, when you engage in different activities and uh, it makes your mind possibly think of more creative solutions that you, that you didn't have been thinking of at that particular time when you are having uh, to solve the problem. So for example, you can maybe go sing and then, you know, once you sing then there's some lyric that, you know, it just kind of like jump starts you and like, ah, oh, did I really try this and the other? So like you'd be coming up with the solutions to the own, your own problems that you are actually facing. Yeah, instead of Googling and uh, maybe there's no power, you can't be able to access the net, stuff like that. So it's just, it just, the secret is just in, um, disengaging your mind for a bit and just trying out something that would stimulate your creativity and not just going to, you know, but, but others do sleep and they <laughs> dream of answers. So it, it really depends on you as a person, you find whatever relaxes you, whatever calms you down and whatever just, um, you know, makes, stimulates your brain creativity. Yeah, so just thinking in those lines, doing such activities that can be able to, disengage you and maybe uh, just drift your imagination into something else and in that uh, line of thought you'll actually come up with the answer and it works it definitely works it has worked very many times and it's even proven it's a proven fact the uh, yeah the we have the solutions to the problems we face we just need to allow our minds to to think in the line of the solution not thinking in terms of the problem but in terms of the solution finding something that will because uh, you know, if your mind is just focused on that, you 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 won't be able to solve the same problem uh, uh, that you, you know, to solve the problem you're trying to, to solve the problem with that kind of thinking that first landed you there. So you need to adjust your mindset, your thinking, and just disengage for a bit and uh, try just try 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 do very something very different um, and engage in various things. You, and you also make sure that your both all your senses are like uh, engaged. For example, uh, just not only speaking, I'm reading a book, also try things that combine your, your different uh, faculties. Like if it's, uh, you can try maybe exercising, I'm sure exercising, singing, doing a combination of both that will just make sure all your senses are in use at that particular time so that your mind can really uh, open up and be creative and think in terms of the solutions and you'll actually be shocked to think like something was very simple and you'll have a more relaxed mind by the time you're going actually to solve the problem again you'll know your your mind will be different it will have a different state and you'll actually see things you'll actually see the solution faster than uh yeah than maybe before if you'd have just stayed uh, wondering what to do, trying to Google with, the, with that similar state of mind, you know, it didn't really make much of a difference. But with an adjusted mindset, thinking fresh mind, you'd actually see maybe that kind of mistake if it was spelling error, stuff like that. I might say step you missed in a project, you, uh, your mind would be more open to it and you'll actually, uh, yeah, solve it just like that. Yeah, simple. Uh, that's very resourceful, <laughs> very insightful how you can maybe try to tackle a problem. And maybe the next challenge could be like, um, you want to introduce uh, maybe a new technology to your uh, organization, or maybe you bring a new idea. So the question could be, mm -hmm. how do you get your manager outside when it comes to paying attention to technology? You know, people don't like something which are coming uh, and uh, changing very fast and people are customs and you know, only new technology, let's say you talk about AI, you want to bring AI, machine learning technologies and uh, solutions uh, to, and automation to the organization, for example. And people, and you know the fear that if they come, people lose jobs, that's one of the fear. So uh, how do you get your manager outside when it comes to paying attention to technology? Uh, just like, how do you rope in the manager in? Okay, so for, for that, uh, you know, actually, um, it, it, it's, uh, um, the kind of audience that your target market really plays a lot because you can, it depends also on the setting on where you want to introduce maybe a particular technology. Because for, for instance, I remember there was a project we were doing um, uh, and it involved like having automated, um, like yeah, automated hand sanitizing, something of that sort. Yeah, it was like a, 
a door push pad where you, when you just put your hands there, it was an IMT project. So the, the UV rays would just uh, like pass through your hand and then you, like you, you didn't need to wash hands. So the main aim was sanitation and keeping hands clean due to COVID and stuff like that. And the thing after we had um, AB just like tried uh, reaching out to different uh, people, they, they really couldn't see like the need of it. You know, there are some people who would see it immediately and others wouldn't. So even before actually going out there to the market um, and, and just try trying to tell people uh, about uh, your product and how it can help them, ETC, ETC, it's for, for you to actually do an analysis, for, which is very, very important, like a um, market uh, audience analysis. Uh, and one thing that I'm really told, uh, that I'm really emphasizing for people because they, they, they will meet diff definitely different kind of people, those who really understand what you're saying and they see the importance of it, like immediately you really don't have to spend a lot of time. These are people maybe with a background in tech and they, they, uh, they've they seen the benefits of tech and they are pro-tech. So they, they, they'd actually be open and they'd um, embrace your idea with much ease because they already have a full knowledge of, of it's working and something of the sort. But now here in an instance where you have a particular target audience, which is very green and uh, they do not understand, maybe the older generation, most of them, they don't see like the need of why, why should you have, uh, why should you automate something and you've been doing it manually and it's been working. So like, so what, it's just the same, we, we, the, the end result is still the same. So uh, it's for you trying to actually get them to see the point, the kind of benefits they'd get from it. So it's not much more focusing on the solution on the kind of technology that you're developing, but focusing on the pain point that uh, you're, uh, you're trying to solve for your user. Uh, for instance, you'd, uh, you'd actually just get it from their point of view. Uh, let's say some, some guys who are uh, uh, maybe, in the in their 60s, 70s and they don't really understand I'm, I'm just people from an techie background they just they just don't understand at all what are you talking about why 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 should we use this and yet there's this better way and it's been working so why should you you know bring uh, why should we use your product and why should we embrace this particular technology so it's getting it from their point of view you ask them what like uh okay, you've been doing this for this particular time, what are the kind of challenges you've been facing? Uh, so they, they tell you ABCD, this is what you've been facing, take some bit of time. Uh, some people take long to complete their tasks and you know, just stuff like that. So it's getting, getting it from their perspective. And then now you, uh, once you bring, you in, once you introduce the technology to them, you'll be speaking from their language you get. So it's for, as a tech person, when you want to bring your manager out, trying to uh, to tell your audience about a particular technology or why they should put their money in it, you're essentially bringing it from their particular point of view, yeah. So understanding what uh, what's what kind of challenges do they uh, face, what, why what would be better for them, and like like just bringing out your solution to to fit their problems like they, they are the kind of needs that they are facing yeah so you're trying to solve a pain point and because uh, so that is essentially uh, why they would need to embrace your technology or you're doing it better more efficient more robust so uh, break, uh, making it come out of them and then coming 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 from them and then you, you're just bringing it uh, tell, telling them now because you you're having maybe this particular process is a bit slow if you try this it will be faster by this amount and you can be able to save this in a particular year if you try uh, using AI so this is the kind of insights you will get you can be able to double this and that so you know it's like bringing it uh, telling them how that particular technology or um, whatever your your technology you're trying to bring will benefit them. So you're trying to see, uh, you, so these are the, the two sides. You have to focus on the pain point, what kind of problem it's solving for them, and also the gains that they also get. So their value proposition in short. So their value proposition of it, what they'll gain, and also the kind of pain relief, their particular technology 
will be solving. And also the, the most they are, what I've noticed is with most developers, they they actually just go flaunting, you know, this is, it's really cool, it's really fast, you know, but people uh, forgetting that the kind of market or the audience, uh, they, they wouldn't really, they don't really eat. They, they're not from a technical background or something of the sort. So they wouldn't appreciate as much or have that excitement that you'd have because you understand how it works. So it's just putting uh, yourself in their shoes. Um, so now like like uh, focusing on the user, so it's more of like a user-centric design of your application or the kind of technology you're, you're trying to use coming from the point of the user and out the application. Of course, technology is just a tool and uh, you're, we are trying to solve the problems for the people. Yeah, not not the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> not forcing the technology on them, but it's just a tool to help uh, in the processes and uh, whatever people do. So the focus should be on the people, and then finally it comes to the technology. So we're doing it um, in an unconventional way than other most people do it. So it's more focusing on the user and uh, their needs, their pain points, and now how they kind of technology would actually uh, be of benefit to them and how it would solve the particular pain point. And once you you are like in agreement, they'd obviously put their money now into it because they see this is something that can really help uh, in solving the kind of problems and they'll also be able to benefit from it. Uh, that's very yeah. incredible. And I love that idea that uh, uh, technology is a tool and you want to help it to solve problems. That should be the best approach. And because I think of time and it should be time process and we're almost getting uh, the meeting done and maybe we have only the last and final question to you. And maybe I don't know the approach is that these days when you have uh, maybe a problem with your smartphone and the simple thing you tell somebody to restart. I know, I don't, I know the phone, the kind of phones you had like the Nokia previous phones, <laughs> we didn't have uh, that option of starting. So, uh, so okay. Uh, the smartphone you can start, the computer also the laptop. So the same question is this, uh, what's the last time you fixed something by turning it off and on and on it again? Two options. Uh, I don't know if you put it in taxonomy or, or maybe, okay, two states. You do it on and off. So when's the last time you fix something by turning it off and on again? <laughs> on and off again. Uh, that would be just recently, I guess. Uh, I think last week on Friday. <laughs> yeah, my my my. Uh, that's the last. Um, okay, the most recent time I fixed something by turning it on and off. Yeah, because most of these, it's just smooth. Like a, it was actually my laptop. I think it had a system lag or something, so I just had to restart it again and refresh the whole system. Yeah, because most of the time, I think it usually happens to most of the devices. The system can just lag, yeah, for different reasons or the other, and the and the best solution is actually just restarting it, putting it on and off. Yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> the off the of the curve, it's not like limited. You have to go. To, uh, it's just more practical. It's just like something which you have maybe encountered with. So it's something you unplug, and people even people unplug. You want to talk about unplugging? You are maybe very active and say the, maybe the other question we're talking about. Uh, so even unplugging can be. So it's just like two states. But uh, that's fantastic of you, and we are so happy of, of frontiering and taking your time to be with us today. You have taken your time to answer the questions, and maybe before uh, I, I say anything else, we are maybe the participants here. Maybe they could have maybe one question or two for us. We don't want to stick ourselves with the script. So maybe they could have uh, one of all two questions or maybe even additions. So maybe I think the floor is open for two, three minutes uh, for the participants here, and then we, we, we move from there. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was seeing Alex, maybe Alex doesn't have much to do. Then uh, I think you're so happy. And maybe you can recreate on, uh, and amplify on what you mean by uh, what we have net squared and tech soup. So I think for you, for your case, when you're talking about working with the non-governmental non non-profit, 
Uh, so it's maybe you could, uh, if you're in Kenya and your organization is registered, you can maybe contact uh, TechSupo. You can maybe do, you can be sharing the links so you can get a discounted uh, software on the same. Like when you have uh, companies and uh, like Microsoft, uh, Zoom, and actually even the Meet, the kind of uh, tools you are using here, that courtesy of uh, TechSoup. And NetSquared, of course, it's a volunteer-led group, like what we have here in NetSquared, and the good things that you, all of you are members now. So we want to you maybe sharing the, the message uh, to go. So I think maybe we'll be more proactive uh, next year. And, and uh, I would wish you the uh, best, maybe because this week we are having our uh, Christmas and uh, happy next year, happy new year. So we should be take care of because of COVID-19, you know, and that's why even we are doing this stuff in online because maybe in the future we'll be doing in person, but we also want to stick to ourselves that we can do a virtual meetup. So maybe Shannon, you had the last word you could say, maybe the participants and then close the meeting. Thank you. Uh, okay, th thank you so much, Red. I'm really honored to be here. I'm really honored to share my experiences as well. And also like to thank uh, the TechSoup and NetSquared. Uh, it's been it's really nice for to organize such events for people to learn and grow more. And I'm sure even next year when it's more physical meetup, we'll have more and more people joining in and just sharing the experiences because I, I, I really believe by sharing and knowledge is when you get to learn even more and you improve even personally so thank you so much for having me and I, I i believe by next year we'll be doing much much more and having more partners as we try to better our communities and impact the lives of those around us so thank you so much you're welcome and we hope that we have more session this uh, next year thank you so much and maybe come at the end of the meeting of uh, come to the end of the session today so we hope have a, a nice christmas happy holidays and happy new year Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.